Um, I'm so pleased to meet you. My name is Elizabeth Mandeville. I direct exploration and experiential learning in career education. I'm joined by Caitlin, who's leading. Wave hi. That's Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Caitlin is our program manager for our fellowships program. You may go goodbye. Thank you for saying. Sorry, you're Great. wonderful. <laughs> She's got a dog. She's got to look at yes. it. And then, and Kate Dalinger, who I'm sure many of you know, who is our program director for fellowships. Um, Kate oversees every fellowship that we advise and support and endow at this college, except for the Watson, which I get to keep for myself because I love it so very much. So <laughs> I'm grateful to Kate for, um, for partnering with me on this award, and I'm so delighted that you are all here to learn about the Watson Fellowship. It is such a magical award, and I'm really excited to talk with you about it today, hear your questions, hey, welcome, um, and dive right in, okay? All right, so first of all, what is the Watson Fellowship? Um, this is taken from the Watson website. It is the, um, I'll read it to you out loud, and then I, I want to sort of pick this apart with you part by part. The Watson is a rare window of time after college and pre-career to engage your deepest interests on a global scale. Fellows conceive original projects, execute them outside of the United States for one year, and embrace the ensuing journey. They decide where to go, who to meet, and when to change course. They do not affiliate with academic institutions and may not hold any formal employment. So what is the Watson Fellowship? The Watson Fellowship to me is such a beautiful concept. It is the investment in you as a young person just graduating from college with the hopes that a year of personal, purposeful travel around the world will deeply influence you and who you are and who you become as a person. Um, it is not about the project that you propose, so that is very important and we'll talk about it. It is not about your professional aspirations, so of course those can be relevant to the project. It's not about what you majored in. It's not about where you come from. It is about who you are at your core, who you want to become, and knowing that you are at a moment in your life when you are ready to be overwhelmed and inspired and challenged and scared and excited and living this wild and unstructured year pursuing something that you care about more than anything else. There is no product to the Watson. There's no making documentaries or writing reports or developing podcasts. Those are sometimes a part of a Watson project, but you are the product of the Watson. That's what they are investing in, that's what they want to see. And so as you think about the Watson, the first thing you need to do is sort of unpack your student self, get out of that research framework, that academic proposal framework, and into something that is much more personal to who you are. So let's, let's unpack this a bit. So first, this is rare window of time after college. You can only do the Watson the year after you graduate. This is a one-time opportunity. Um, but th th there's other ones out there, so I will talk about that at the end. Um, it's a time to engage your deepest interests on a global scale. The Watson wants you to propose a project, something that will guide your year, a lens through which you're going to view the world for a year that is very core to who you are. It shouldn't be a new interest or an evolving interest or something that you've been kind of meaning to learn about or that sounded great when you read about it this summer and now you want to make time for it, but rather it should be something that has driven you for a long time, that gets you out of bed, that when you are working on this thing, time melts away. And it's, it's something that you enjoy so fully that it, you can't help but build it into your inquiry about the world, your feelings about the world. Um, and when, when people, if you were to ask someone in your life, if I were to do something crazy for a year, what would it be? They would know the answer. It might be connected to your academics, and that is absolutely valid. Of course, many of us choose majors or, or write theses or take on studies that are related to the things that we care about most. It may have nothing to do with your major. It might be a hobby. It might have to do with your extracurricular activities or your professional aspirations. What's important for Watson is that they can see that this is a long-standing interest for you. Not recent, not something that sort of has just been a part of your life because you were born and, and, and sort of inherited it as a part of your life, but rather something that you pursue. So for me, if somebody asked me what my Watson would be, the answer would be knitting which has nothing to do with my professional goals or my college major, which is international relations or anything like that. But it's something that I do that I love, where time melts away. I bond with other people who are interested in wool and fiber and the way that you produce those materials in ethical ways. 
It's a way to connect with women primarily when I travel. It's something that I don't need to have a foreign language to share with somebody. It's something that has really interesting, diverse traditions from place to place. There are interesting contemporary questions around the ways that wool is harvested. It's really fun. I get to wear it. I get to make baby gifts. It's something that I just love in so many ways. It helps me see the world and connect to people. It's something that I can touch with my hands. That would be my Watson. Your, when you think about your Watson, that's the kind of thing that you're thinking about, is what, what, what when you describe what your Watson would be, gives you bumps with excitement. It's on a global scale. This is a traveling fellowship. And you see here that it needs to be outside of the United States. If you are an international student, it also needs to be outside of your home country. And you should only be visiting places where you have not spent a substantial amount of time, more than four weeks of, of time. If you are going to an enormous country like China or India where you have spent time previously, there's a little flexibility there if you don't go back to places you've already been. Um, however, that is, those are firm requirements because this is meant to push you and stretch you in new ways in places where you are uncomfortable. You can see of an original project, and that I just talked with you about. This should be something that is very central to who you are, that excites you, that gets you up, but also that is really distinctly you. That, um, that, that there's something that, when, when Watson does is evaluation of candidates, they sort of look at your proposal, your project, they look at you as a person, and then they want to see that marriage. Do they fit? Does your story lead to this experience next? Um, the embrace of the ensuing journey is really important. The whole point of Watson is the journey. The whole point of Watson is for you to not know what's going to happen next. It's for you to grow and to be challenged. And so if you're thinking about a Watson as, boy, that would be great on my graduate school applications, or that would really help me start to frame how I want to pursue my professional aspirations, or what I might want to do my professional research on when I go to graduate school, the Watson is not that fellowship. There are other fellowships that can help you to do that, and we will talk about that. But that's not what the Watson is. The Wat if, if, if your aspiration for Watson is anything at its most core but growth, this may not be the right fit, because for Watson, that's what it's all about. You decide where to go, who to meet, and when to change course, which is to say, no one's going to tell you how to spend your year. Mm -hmm. When you write your Watson proposal, you propose the countries that you want to go to, you give a rationale for those countries, you, you might make some contacts in those countries to really prove that this is feasible, this is viable. But this is not a structured year with a tight agenda. It's very likely you may turn up in one country and all of your contacts have disappeared, or you were wrong that this really isn't a great country to study your topic. And so you write to Watson and say, I changed my mind, I'm going to Botswana, and off you go. Um, it's, it's really meant to be something that evolves as your ideas about it evolve, where the people that you're interacting with help to transform your journey. Um, and so it's very important that you be prepared to sort of drive that forward. It is uncomfortable, and that's the point. And then finally, you don't affiliate with academic institutions or hold formal employment. For, for Watson, yes, you want to have some contacts in the country that you're going to. Um, however, they shouldn't be formal relationships. You shouldn't be taking classes. You shouldn't be doing a formal internship where somebody is counting on your output as a part of what they do. You should be able to leave at any time to start your next, your next stop. Um, it's a really beautiful vision for a program. And what I love about Watson is that I think they actually achieve this and what they help students to do. There are some fellowships where I sort of see the vision for it and then I see how it's conducted and I say, eh, you've got about 80% of it. Watson really believes this and achieves it in the way that it structures this program. It is a really special vision. Okay. So what do people do on Watson? tons of things. And one thing I would really encourage you to do is to start spending some time looking at the projects that past Wellesley students and also non-Wellesley students have pursued. Um, we have information on our website and through daily shots where students talk about their Watson proposals. Mayra's, I think, is a really good example. What Mayra proposed um, was to study uh, sustainable architecture. And it truly is something that she's wanted to do her whole life. Her internships have been based around it, her academic work, her volunteer work. She really could demonstrate that history. Um, Audrey Wozniak was a, it, it was a um, political science major and a musician. She wanted to be both a journalist and she was an incredibly talented violinist. She knew that her future career was likely to be in journalism, so she thought, 
the Watson is my opportunity. This is my year to invest in, in this thing that I care about so much. And so she studied stringed instrument um, traditional cultures around the world. Um, had an incredible experience. On the Web Austin website, you'll also be able to read the descriptions of people from different different countries, different schools, different projects, um, to see the variety of things that are out there. It is irrelevant if this is in the social sciences or the humanities or the science fields. It's irrelevant if this is person facing or if you will be in deserts by yourself the whole time. There, there's really no ideal Watson project. And I think one of the mistakes that candidates often make is to think, gosh, I have to propose something that's really important or that's really noble or that's really quirky. And when you look at the Watson proposals, yes, there are, there are projects every year that are funded that fall into all of those categories. But if that project is not your project, if that's not the project that really excites you, one, you're going to have a horrible experience. But two, it's, it's, it's going to be really clear in your application that what you proposed is not the thing you most want to do, it's the thing that you think Watson most wants to see that you want to do. And, and that's really truly not what Watson looks for. Every year, Watson tells us, if we got 40 amazing volcano proposals in a year, we would fund all of them. If, if we had 40 unique individuals who all wanted to study the same topic, but they, but they could all make it a case for why that was unique to them, no problem at all. It really is about the person. And so as you go through the Watson website and read the projects from this past year, and, and in years, years before, there's a huge um, volume there. Yes, it, it can be overwhelming to look at all of it. And, it and, and I think all of us at Wellesley are very familiar with imposter syndrome. You can look at it and think, oh my gosh, I, I can't come up with anything like this. You can if you can find that very authentic pro project to yourself. So keep that in mind as you go through those, those proposals. They're great for, not proposals, uh, projects. They're great for helping you to see the kinds of things that are out there, but should not steer you towards a particular project. Think about how it connects to the person. Does that make sense? So who can apply? Any graduating senior can apply. If you're graduating this December, or if you're graduating in June, you're eligible this year. If you, are, if you are graduating next December, you can apply next year. So when you graduate is irrelevant. As long, you, you have a shot when, as long as you would begin after the, in, in the summer after you graduate. There are no nationality requirements. There's no major requirements. They are truly interested in any field. And one of the things I think is really important to, that is not here there's no GPA requirement. I think a lot of students, when they think about fellowships, are really worried about GPA. Do they really want a perfect GPA or a high GPA? Those fellowships exist, but this is not that fellowship. And so feel, feel that freedom um, that, this, that they're looking for something very different here. It's not to say they don't look at your transcript. They want to see what you've taken. Is, and, and they want to see that you did well in the courses relevant to your project. They want to see that you've challenged yourself. They want to see that you have stretched yourself. Um, but, but know that. I know that can be a barrier in some people's minds in thinking about these awards. What comes with the award is $30,000, um, which is meant to last for the, the entire year for your travel around the world. So as you're thinking about your project, you probably don't just want to go to Tokyo and London. You want to propose a, a project that you can actually stretch your budget to that entire year. Or if you're going to Tokyo and London, you need to be very clever about how you're using your budget and where you plan to live and how you plan to travel. Um, for the year, Watson will also cover the, um, your, your medical insurance expenses, and if you're getting federal loans, they will cover them for the year. Okay. So how do you apply? There, the, for the Watson Fellowship, Wellesley College every year can nominate four candidates. And so we do have an internal process for selecting those four. The deadline for it is October 4th, so you've got just shy of a month to pull this together, and we have got your back, don't worry, we will talk about that process next. Uh, but what you need to, to, to compile by that deadline are first, the completed um, official application. If you want access to the Watson application, you need to write to us to let us know. Many of you may already have that access, but if you email fellowships at wellesley.edu, which I will put up at the end of this presentation, we will make sure you have that access and you can see it. And that's just an online form um, so that we, we can see how your application will look in the end. The most important part of your application, which I'm sure comes as no surprise, are these two essays, the personal statement and the project statement. The personal statement is the essay that really helps us see how you got here, why this award, 
How is it that everything in your life is leading to this, to this project? What is that thread that goes through your life's journey, whether it be longstanding or, or somewhat more recent, that really helps us to see why this is the next right thing, why this is the project for you? Help us to see that story. That's a 1,500 word essay. Your, your project statement is, is, it speaks to the themes in the personal statement, but it's much more pragmatic and logistical. This is where you tell us what is the project, what is the theme that you're going to explore, where are you going to go, how are you going to do it, what's going to be hard about that year. What's really important about Watson is to understand that you have to really balance feasibility and stretch, which means that they want you to push yourself hard. You should not only be going to countries where you are very comfortable in the language, where you really understand the culture, they want to see that in some way, whether it is remoteness or new countries or new languages, or in some way, you are putting yourself proactively in places where you're going to have to really push yourself. And they need to see feasibility, which is to say, do you have, if, if you need access to a particular space or population, have you actually spoken with someone that can help you to get there and can say, yeah, I think what you plan to do sounds really interesting and hard and I'll help you do it. Um, you know, it's one thing if you propose knitting and you don't speak the language. It's another if you want to study folk songs and don't speak the language. That is probably going to be seen as a stretch too far for Watson because how can you study uh, songs in, in a language that you don't understand? So you need to find that balance and really demonstrate that balance in your project statement of feasibility versus stretch. Um, they want to see that you're being realistic and that you understand the challenges that lie ahead, that you're prepared for them. Um, Watson doesn't need to see prior study abroad. Nor, and, and they're very happy to receive applicants from, apps from students who are very experienced in global travel and who have never owned a passport. Both of those are absolutely very competitive for Watson. But their expectations then about stretch, about preparation, about where you will go and how you will push yourself will be different. Um, what is your plan for the 12 month period? And it has to be a t absolutely 12 months. Um, there's no coming back in between. For Watson, it is incredibly important to know that you cannot come home, except in very extreme circumstances of, of death of, of an immediate family member. They take it extremely seriously. So know that this is a real 12-month time. It's not an academic year. Um, think about not just sort of the big project and the big plan, but how are you actually going to fill 365 days on your project? How are you going to immerse yourself in it? You can't interview people for 365 days. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to experience what it is that you're interested in? Are you going to immerse yourself in a community and live there? Are you going to learn a new trade? Are you going to participate in, in a ritual or a recital or some kinds of cultural immersion um, tradition, something that like, like um, taking dance classes or participating in, in something like that? Think beyond how you would study this topic from an academic lens. So beyond books and archives and interviews to actually understand it on an emotional level mm -hmm. and, and an immersive level. And from all points of view, not just the one that, that sort of mo is, is most easy to, and, and appealing to you. So if you're interested in sort of how talk radio is, a, is, a, is an important component of promoting democracy, you should also plan to spend some time with, with, um, with radio stations that might be counter-democratic. And what, would, what does it mean to understand their perspective and develop that understanding around the world? Um, and then what challenges and opportunities are unique to your project? So those are the essays. You need one reference from a Wellesley College faculty member. It has to be a Wellesley College faculty member. If you are one of our four nominees, you will then need to get a second reference. And that doesn't have to be from anybody on our campus. What's really important to know about this reference is, one, it is not a letter. So before you ask a faculty member to write a letter, and they write you a beautiful letter, and then you come back and say, oops, you wrote that for nothing. I need you to fill out this form. Make sure that you really remember that and, and give them clear instructions about what this is. I will give you that form to share with them. So when you create an application with us, I will email it to everyone who has an application in the system this week so that you have it. What this is, is, oh, go ahead. Um, are we going to see the actual questions, or are you like, emailing us a link? That I'll email you the form, that, so you will see the questions. And, that, and that's a great question. And it's really important that you see them, because you need to choose the person who can best answer them. Yes, it's great for your faculty to comment on your coursework, on your performance in classes, and things like that. But that's not what Watson wants to know. They want to know about your character. They want to know, are you up for this? Are you ready for this? What do they know about you as a person? 
that can really contribute to your preparation for this. So choose a faculty member who knows you well as a person. And it's okay if they don't know everything about you as a person, how could they? What a great opportunity now to share with them the interest that you have. Um, and how your story is beginning to coalesce around this experience. Share your essays with them. Share your thoughts and your plans. Um, the more information you can give them, the better a reference they can write. Okay. Unofficial transcripts. So from Banner is fine. Um, just print, give us, print up and, and send us your Banner transcript. Remember that we also need to study abroad. And this is a tip for you. If you studied abroad, we don't have that transcript for you on this campus unless you did a Wellesley program. You have to reach out to the school or the program you went through to get that reference. Please order yourself five and just stuff them in a drawer because you will need these again and again over the next couple of years and it is a pain to get them. So just keep that in mind. If you are our nominee, we will want to get um, an official transcript. So just keep that in mind for your planning that we will let you know we'll work with you to get that, um, but that is a necessity. You'll need a resume. If you don't have one, come to Career Education. We will help you make that as beautiful and polished as possible ahead. Just give us, give yourself enough time. And then finally, we ask you to do a YouTube video. It's a three minute video describing your Watson project. Don't overthink it. In the past, we've received videos that are produced with music and, and, and vistas. We don't <laughs> want that at all. What's really special about the Watson is that every nominee is interviewed by Watson. They come to campus. And it's not a 20 minute interview, it is a full hour. Some, so, so, which is awesome. I love this about the Watson, because they really get to know you. You get to go deep with the interviewer, who's usually a Watson alum. Um, what I think is really helpful for us about the video is that some people really come alive on paper, some people really come alive in person. And so we as a committee, before we invite candidates to come for an interview, want to make sure that we allow you to show yourself in your best light, whichever that is. Because for the Watson, you get both. You get to do both. Does that make sense? So don't overthink it. Sit in your dorm room. Make sure it's quiet. Talk to us with enthusiasm about your project. Simple as that. Okay. There's instructions for that on our website, which I'll show you at the end. And before you go to the next slide, the sample letter form is actually available via a link on the Wellesley Oh, Watson fantastic. Page. Wonderful. I'll show you how to find that, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So what is Watson looking for in a candidate? These are the other categories by which they really measure who they're looking at. And I want you to think about these, um, these categories in really, um, in really broad ways. So when they say leadership, it is not about titles. They don't care if you are co-president or president of an organization or anything like that. They want to know that you have led, which is to say you've compelled people towards a great decision. You have driven consensus. You have driven a decision. You have pointed to, to problems when you see them and helped to bring them to resolution. You know how to be diplomatic. You know how to, how to demonstrate empathy. Um, you can work with others who have different views from you. All of those are characteristics of leadership that Watson hopes to see. He wants to see that you have imagination, and a lot of that comes out in the way that you talk about your project and the way that you want to pursue it. They want to see that you're independent, and that is obviously really important for this Watson experience because you are on your own for a year and really driving this journey yourself. They are not going to tell you how to do it. Emotional maturity, that you are really up to this. This is an intense year. I often tell students that the first reaction of someone when they win the Watson is usually terror, and that's not unreasonable. It's a really scary prospect to realize, oh my god, I'm going to be alone with a backpack for a year figuring this out. I don't, I've, I've never done anything like this. And then after the terror comes like excitement and glee and bliss and, and all of those wonderful things. But in order to process that and to, and to really sustain yourself for that year, this is a really big one. Courage for similar reasons. Integrity. They really want to know that you're going to represent the Watson with integrity, that you're going to represent yourself well, that you're somebody who has a really high moral code for yourself and, and live by it and demonstrate it and, and what you do. Those of you are resourceful and that you're responsible. Okay. So how do you figure out your project? This is a big one. And I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of ways to go about it. There are some students for whom um, they know right now. I bet there's a few of you in this room, you're like, oh yeah, 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 no, I've, I've known this for years. I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm ready to write. I've written already, I'm going. And that's absolutely fine. A lot of students don't begin that way. And I will, I'll be really honest, for, for most students, the first couple of drafts that they bring my way are really important topics, but it's not their topic. So it's very common for someone to start their Watson by saying, you know, 
refugees are a really important problem right now, a really important crisis in the world of supporting refugees, and, and, and I've studied this in my classes, and I, I just want to go and, and talk to refugees and elevate their voice, and I'm going to have a blog. And for a person for whom that has actually been their life for several years, that could be a great topic. But it's evident in the writing that it's not where their heart is. That, which is to say, it's not that you're in your heart you don't care about the population or the topic you're writing about, but it's not what gives you goosebumps. You, your, your goal is to find your goosebump project. I think one of the things that is really hard about Watson, but also incredibly important, is that to write a really great Watson proposal and, and, and personal statement, you have to put your heart on a plate. You have to demonstrate that there is nothing else on this planet that you will want to do more than this for a year, and your whole life has been driving towards it. And that means making yourself incredibly vulnerable, and it also makes you incredibly self-aware. It's a great chance to reflect on who you are in your first semester in college. And I say this is somebody who wrote a terrible Watson proposal when I was at Wellesley, and it clarified so much for me. And I didn't even get an on-campus interview, but it was such an important experience. So just know that that is a part of the process as well. Anyway, back to finding your project. Um, you have to put your heart on a plate. Be honest about what you care about. And, it, and again, I think one of the hard things about Watson, and many have said this in the course of their Watson year, it just feels so selfish to have a Watson year. You're being given 30 grand to do anything you want to do. And yes, that is an incredibly um, privileged thing to experience. And they're not investing in you having a great year. They're investing in the person that you are going to become because of that year. So trust Watson. Trust that they're designing this in a way that is going to profoundly shape who you are and where you go in life and enable you to live in a more humane way and live in a more worldly way and know yourself better um, than anybody else in, possibly could. So please keep that in mind. Talk to your friends, talk to your faculty, talk to your parents, come and talk with me, talk with Kate, talk with Caitlin, talk with your college career mentor. I think a lot of us come to our Watson project by talking and people saying back, no, this, you don't talk about that very often. I don't, I don't know that that's really interesting to you. Like, let's dig into this. I, I see you doing this in your free time. I, I hear you talk about this all the time. I see you writing these, I see you writing on the side or traveling or the way that you engage the world or haven't you always done this when you go home for breaks? Get the people who know you best to, to really help you think through what that Watson project is. And use the writing as a way to try and get it out. Um, as I said, I see 90% of the first Watson drafts I see are not the project that you wind up with. So it is very fine to come and just say, this is what I've written, I'm not very excited about it, and we will, we will, we will work with you to get where you need to get. So think a lot about the logistics of this. We talked a little bit about this, um, but think about what it would be need to be in a particular community, where you want to go. One thing that's really important to understand for Watson is you can't go just anywhere. If there is a, um, you need to look at their website for guidance, but if there is an embargo uh, against, the against the country by the US, so like Cuba, if there is um, a US State Department warning, I think level four or five. There goes Mexico. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So th there are restrictions. Turkey is a no-go. There are some countries to which you cannot travel. Three or four. Yeah, What's that? It's three or four. Thank you. Three or four. Okay. But four or five is United Healthcare. My mistake. Three or four. Thank you. Um, those are countries you can't go to. Also, there are countries that are a one or two, but that have a region with a three or four. You, it, it's a really delicate dance to figure out where you want to go. And again, we can help you brainstorm that or find ways to research that. But know that it's not anywhere. It ha you have to be really um, strategic about where you go. And know that during the course of your Watson year, things may shift. A country may open that wasn't previously open or may close that, that was open previously. You have to change your plans entirely. And that's part of the experience. Um, again, think about what your day one might look like. Day 100, day 364. How are you going to fill your time? How are you going to spend your days in an immersive way? Um, and really think honestly about the challenges and how you're going to demonstrate that you're aware of them and that you are up to them in, in thoughtful and strategic ways. Okay. The last thing I want to say is that fellowships are always about fit, always. I think a lot of students approach fellowships like the Watson or the Rhodes or the Fulbright or the Truman or any number of incredible opportunities thinking, Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. I should apply for that. I would be crazy not to apply for that. Yes, 
And if it's not the right fit for you, if it's not the experience that you actually want to pursue, one, you're, again, you're gonna have a terrible time, and two, it will be so clear in your application that this isn't what you want. You're gonna twist and turn what you really want to do to fit that fellowship. There are fellowships out there to enable travel, graduate study, language teaching, service, research, a whole number of things. Figure out what you want to do most first, and then find a fellowship that fits you. That might be the Watson. It might not, and that's okay. It's okay to start a fellowships process and just be like, oh my, I cannot deal with this lack of structure. I need structure. And there's a lot of fellowships that offer structure. There's a lot of fellowships that offer affiliations or more professional experiences that will also take you to new and exciting places, that will expose you to new cultures, that will let you practice your language skills, that will help you to grow, which at the core is really the point of every fellowship is to help you to grow. So also be honest with yourself. If this, if this just feels like a should rather than a I have to do this, this may not be the right fit, and we can help you find the right fit, whether it's now or in the future, okay? Do know that we as an office in career education are here to help you, certainly Kate and myself, and Caitlin as well, but our whole mission as an office is to help you figure out where you fit in the world. And so know that you can talk with your college career mentor, with your career community advisor, with our civic engagement program director, and others to really talk about where it is that you're headed. Does this fit into your journey? Um, if they can't answer your question, they are a good thought partner and will help you get where it is that you, you really need to go. The other thing that you should know is that there are other Watson e fellowships. Um, if you go to our website, so wellesley.edu slash career education, and click on fellowships, you can search by travel fellowships. That's one of the buttons that you can push. And when you do so, you'll learn about a couple. So first is the Watson, and this is where you can find information. Please, please, before you come to an appointment, read this website. Mm -hmm. It is not a good use of your time to wait for two weeks for a meeting with me to come and ask about a deadline. That is not a good use of either of our time. We want to spend that time talking about your ideas, where you're stuck, where you're discouraged, where you're excited. That is a good use of an appointment. Please do your homework. Um, on this site, as Kate said, you can find um, the link to the reference form that, you want your, that your references need to review and complete. You'll also find information um, about past winners of the Watson Fellowship that have been on the Daily Shot. Um, and you can also find, oh, and, and one other thing to know that if it's not here yet, it will be. Um, there is a webinar coming up in a week for the Watson that we can watch together. Mm -hmm. So it'll be available on the Watson website. You don't have to come, but if you want to come and watch, we will promote it here. And put it, but that's available at Handshake now for you to sign up for. Yeah. Um, I think I uh, remember seeing that, and it was at a time during my class. Do you know yeah. it's going to be recorded? Yes, it, it oh. will be recorded, okay. and Watson will put it on its website. Okay. Um, and since you signed in today, I will email it out to all of you. Um, if you're not able to come. Coming is kind of fun because we can ask questions together and things like that, but yes, absolutely, it would be there. it's not a good time, I agree. Um, as I said, there are other ways to get there, one of which is the Susan Rappaport Knopfel 52 Traveling Fellowship. This is basically a Wellesley funded Watson. We have an incredibly generous donor named Sig Knopfel who gave the, this award um, in celebration of his wife's birthday. She's a Wellesley alumna. And it is basically a Wellesley funded Watson. Almost everything that I've just said about the Watson is relevant for the Knopfel. We have a slightly different um, restrictions about travel. You can only stay in a place two months, no more, oh. um, things like that. But for the oh, most part, it's the same. This deadline is in February. It may be that you are stuck right now. You cannot figure out what your Watson is. And then in December, you're going to figure it out and you're going to say, Rats, I missed the Watson, the Knopfel is for you. Watson applicants would be crazy not to also apply for the Knopfel. Whether you were nominated by us or not, this is your next shot. And if you miss the Watson for whatever reason, you should go for the Knopfel. It's a different selection committee as well. And so truly every year, for the past several years, our winners for this award have in fact been students who never applied for the Watson. Um, and so it really is an, an open field. It's, I think there's an assumption sometimes that, well, this is just for those who were nominated for the Watson but didn't win it. We've not had that, that candidate win for years. Yeah. Um, so uh, I forgot the time. What Watson, Watson <coughs> fellows wouldn't know by this application that like that That's a great question. You are correct. You would not know the results by this deadline, but we don't announce the winners until after the Watson announces on March 15th. Does that make sense? Yes. But that's right, you would not yet know. Okay. But the application is so similar. 
it is it, it is not so much work mm -hmm. to, to make the transformation okay. um, that it wouldn't be worth applying. Okay. The other thing to remember, um, this is oh this is Kui Ying. Does everyone know Kui Ying? Yes. Oh, I love Kui Ying. Kui Ying was um, was one of our Canopla winners in recent years. She studied Chinatowns around the world. She grew up in Chinatown in New York and really was interested in the ways in which community organizing and community develops in Chinatowns worldwide and diaspora communities. Hi, Kui Ying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other one that I think is so special is the Mary Elvira Stevens Traveling Fellowship. This was created by an alumna from the class of 1891. And it is, it is like a, a Watson for alumni. And to me, that she thought of that late in that century, it just gives me chills, that kind of prescience and, and, and insight. We have awarded this award to alumni well into their 90s. You are not eligible for it until you are 25, and after that, you can apply to your heart's content. Apply for it when it's time, but this is here for you forever. And we've had alumni who have studied art projects around the world, poetry, um, connected with scientific research labs where the researchers come from communities currently in conflict. Um, it is incredible where political organizing in different countries, family histories. It really, it, it's about, so what, what this really is about is a, a strong desire to travel and a deep love of beauty, which is such a lovely Wellesley sentiment, but it, it really is sort of about find, creating space in your life for both inner beauty, for finding beauty in the world, for encountering it, for exploring it, for your deep, deepening your passion for something. Um, so I'll come back to that one for my big project later on, but not for a while. Um, next steps. First, schedule an appointment. And that should not be the first time you talk with anybody about the Watson, but my appointments get booked out. And so I want you to get it on your calendar now. And then, while you're preparing for it, um, go to our career education page and read our fellowships website and the Watson resource page. This one read because it may be that there are other awards out there that appeal to you and you don't want to miss those deadlines. As seniors, when you are applying for fellowships, most of your deadlines are in the fall semester. The last ones are really February. The Canopla would really be the last one. Make sure you don't miss any. Now is the time to be reading those materials, knowing what's out there. So figure out what's out there and read, read the Watson resource page. Plan to attend this viewing for the Watson, um, for the Watson webinar. Um, we'll be in Founders 317. I know the time is not very conducive to Wellesley's schedule, but Watson will put it online. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one thing I do want to say for those of you watching at home, um, remember that these, this year's deadlines only uh, apply for this year. So web web webinar viewings, campus deadlines vary from year to year. This is only for 2018. Okay. Next, start really brainstorming and researching your project. Brainstorming means finding that project and then researching is the how are you going to do it? What countries are you going to go to? What, what contacts do you need to develop? Start writing, and I cannot emphasize this enough. I think a lot of students really want to have their, full, their project fully baked in their minds before they start writing. And so the writing doesn't come until the end, which means that number one, I can't give you feedback on your drafts. Your faculty, your friends, our other advisors cannot give you feedback. And feedback is so important. Revision is so important. But two, if, if what you submit is your first draft, we will know it. It's, it's, it's just clear that you haven't gotten to that depth. Use the writing as part of your brainstorming process, and your proposal will be so much better. And then finally, start to talk to your faculty reference. Now is really the time to get on their calendar. Faculty may not write the reference until the week that it's due, but as a courtesy from you to them, give them time to think it through. Get it on their calendar. Ask them what they need from you to write a great reference. Every faculty member is different. They all have different timelines and needs and expectations. They may want for you to remind them. They will likely want to see your materials. They may want to see your transcript. Some want sort of a bulleted one page reminding them topics of papers that you wrote or conversations that you had. It's not to say that they don't remember everything, but they work with a lot of students and giving them that information at hand rather than them having to dig to find it helps them write a much, much better reference. Okay, so ask them what they need from you and ask soon. So for questions, we have lots of time now for questions. And you can always email fellowships at wellesley.edu with questions. You can always email me directly. Don't hesitate to follow up with me. This is such a hectic time of year, and there are times that I'm not quick enough. So don't hesitate to follow up. Graciously, I appreciate that, but do follow up. I don't take any offense to it. 
Okay. The nice thing about the fellowships email is that there are a number of us who watch it. So yes, that's often a that good one. way to, to get a, a, a sooner response. Someone will get back to you. Okay. So what are your questions? That's level four and some Yeah. Uh, I'm confused about the reference. So you say not to, it's not a letter or is it's it a not a letter. Okay. So it is a it is a form. Okay. It's a form with several questions that okay. they have to answer and small paragraphs. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sure, of course. And if any faculty are confused about the Watson, whether it's what we're asking for from or what is this award, they can always call me. Okay, we're, we're happy to, to clarify for them. It is kind of a surprising award. It's not terrible questions on the form. I'm mean, like, the first one is like, so how have you done the nominee and, and in what capacities? And then they, they list the qualities we were just looking at, the selection qualities, and like, do you have anything to say about how the candidate has demonstrated these mm -hmm. things? Um, what legacy or deep, deep impression, if any, has the student left on you uh, or on your campus? Um, oh these goodness. are short answer things of like 100 or 200 words a piece. Okay. This is not a, a book answer. Mm -hmm. In what ways do you believe the Watson Fellowship would be a transformative experience for the nominee? What evidence can you provide of the nominee's investment in the proposed project beyond academic coursework? <coughs> the very premise of the nominee's project may be upended as they encounter it on the ground. How does the nominee deal with difficult and changing conditions? Do you believe that this person will be able to adapt well, even thrive under unexpected conditions? What, if anything, gives you pause about sending this nominee on a year-long solo pursuit that will include moments of loneliness, failure, and even illness? What might your reservations be? And then, is there anything else that we should know about the candidate? So the, the, the people you ask have lots of opportunities to say different things. And this is not a standard academic reference. Um, so you want to think about how people know you, and even if you know somebody primarily as an academic reference, can you have some conversations about your proposal? And sit down and talk with somebody about why you really care about this and what's driving this. If you can get them excited about the project as well, it makes it so much easier for them to write a really strong, specific reference. It's also a pretty good test for, you get your faculty advisor, your mentor, you know, jazzed about this, it's a good indicator for getting other folks jazzed about it, too. Thank you. What other questions? Are you all overwhelmed? <laughs> yeah. We threw a lot of information at your heads. Yeah, but, um, so the deadline for Wallace is October yes. 4th, and we need to have the proposal and the personal statement. Yep, and the online application, the reference, the resume. And the YouTube video. There's a checklist on the Leslie Watson page. Yeah, so so all of that. Mm -hmm. But my question is, do those things get revised at all before it's they go to Watson, question. or are they at the same no, time? They do get. So if you are one of our four nominees, so remember there is that internal competition. So you mm -hmm. want it to be as good and as strong and as complete as possible by then. If you're on, among our nominees, you do have a chance to keep tweaking and revising. You never want to over-edit a Watson. Rough edges are okay with a Watson proposal. But yes, you do have a chance to revise before everything goes in in November. So then my, so my question is, for the official application, is that kind of just like a sheet that we fill out mm -hmm. to Watson directly? Yeah, so I, that's a great question. I can access the online application portal. So when you complete your online application for that first deadline, I will just print it and give it to the committee so they can see what Watson would see. Does that make sense? Okay. But you will be able to keep revising it until you click submit. Gotcha. Yeah. So there are four nominees for the college, and then how many, like, does Watson limit it to one person overall? No. Last year we won three. Oh. Sometimes we won, sure. we win one. It varies from year to year. Sometimes, some years there's none. And so it really varies from year to year. But what's it, what's, what I do really appreciate about Watson is it is a very limited pool of schools that are able to, to nominate. So um, all of those schools are small liberal arts colleges. They can all nominate four, um, and the selection goes from there. But it is, it is not, uh, there's no quota involved. I'm not even sure that they consider institution as a part of your, um, as, as a part of reviewing your application. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so does a 12 month period start immediately after graduating? It's a great question. You've got about um, eight to 12 weeks before you have to start. So you can decide when during the summer you have to start, but there is a firm final date by which you must leave. The reason for that is because the way the Watson ends, it's really quite beautiful. All of the Watson fellows who have never before met or been in touch come together at the end of the Watson for a week long conference at a, on a college campus. And this is the only product of your entire year. You have 10 minutes to present to your fellow Watsoners what happened. 
And I got to go to one of these a few years ago up at, um, at College of the Atlantic in Maine. And some students, it was a very formal PowerPoint. There was an interpretive dance. Like there was, it was fantastic. What's really special about that is that you have just been through in what has been a transformative and challenging experience and no one in your life from your, from your life before Watson understands, right? They haven't been there, they haven't seen you go through it. You have been forever changed and very little else in your life has. But these 39 other people um, have had a similar experience and, and that bonding is really wild and special. So, that's it. so you have to end, you have to end your, you have to begin your year um, before 12 months before that. Does that make sense? So they give you a date in August. Typically about the 1st of August. Mm. Oh, 1st of August. Interesting. Makes me think. <laughs> what else? Um, how long do Watsoners uh, like stay in a country typically? It's a great question. It's really up to you. It's, um, there are some Watsoners who do one country. That is unusual. It's usually three to five countries, but it, um, I, would, I would advise not leave, giving yourself enough time to have a deep experience, but it is entirely up to you. And you need to make the case for why you're choosing that length of time, but it's entirely up to you. Yeah. What do Watsoners typically go on to do? Like, is All it kinds of things. <laughs> Really everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. This year is the 50th anniversary of the Watson Fellowship, and they're in the process of really sort of compiling um, that story about what do Watsoners go on to do. Um, they go on to work in the arts, in theater, as faculty, as writers, as scientists. It, I think you can really name it. Um, they're, they're all over the map. Politicians. It, it is an incredible, incredible variety of professions. I wouldn't even want to pigeonhole it. But I mean, Julie Taymor, who directed The Lion King and choreographed it, she was a Watson fellow. Um, I'm trying to, like, I've, I have a friend who was a Watson. He runs a, um, a bicycling like, national organization in DC. He biked around the world in his Watson. Um, a friend of mine is, is a musician. She, um, she spent her year studying the spinning of different fibers around the world. We've had fellows study brick making. We've had fe who want to be architects. We've had fe fellows study music who want to be politicians. Like, it's, it's, um, some of them are very relevant. Some of them are very dissimilar. And some, obviously, the once a year puts you in a very different uh, direction. So it's, but it's really across the spectrum. One of the things that struck me when we were talking with the director of the Watson Fellowship um, last winter was as they've been surveying Watson Fellows, it was remarkable to him how many Watson Fellows had taken this wild, crazy, outside the box, who to thunk it kind of a project and found a way to make that the core of what they went on to do in really interesting ways. And they may have done, you know, traditional sort of nine to five jobs, but the Watson year shaped that in amazing and extraordinary mm -hmm. ways that, you know, might might not have been opened up to them in any other way. I think it makes you see what's possible. You know, yeah. I think at this moment it's hard to imagine that you could do something like this. And after twelve months you've done it. Right? And if you've done that, then what else can you do? And there's something really amazing about that. Really empowering. Any other questions? Speaking of empowerment, you are all being really bold by just being here this afternoon and daring to imagine this possible future for yourselves. Keep being bold. Keep being daring. You never know where that might lead you. Thank you, everybody. Please reach out anytime. Make appointments. I will be adding more and more appointments in handshake. Yes, yeah, you have a right. last question? Yeah, I have one last question. I went to the fellowships, and I think they're booked out to like. There are Maybe lots of appointments I, open right now. I just checked. Okay, yeah. Thank you. yeah, yeah. So when, when you go into the handshake, you. click fellowships and then click Watson. Okay. And and I have several in there right now. I probably have at least have it. Yeah. So we should only uh, book appointments with you if for like the staff or you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. If I mean if if and if if there are not appointments there, just write to me. We will find an alternative. Mm -hmm. I will add more. Don't ever hesitate to reach out. But we will make it work. And the other thing is that there are pop up advising of, um, oh, opportunities true. every Friday at the Lulu, and so you can swing by without an appointment and just chat and ask a question. Yeah. So 
if you suddenly think, ah, I really need a question, like I can't talk to Liz for X, like yeah. they will try to do it by email, but sometimes it's just easier to talk to somebody about something. Um, there's always that two hour block from 12.30 to 2.30 on a Friday. Um, just swing by and talk, brainstorm. Come share your ideas and your notions. Um, yeah, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I, I think the thing to remember, Kate and I are both in the Watson Committee. We both know Watson very, very well. You can work with both of us. And this is the, t the time of year for fellowships. This is when Kate gets slammed, and so you'll probably have more luck finding me um, with an immediate appointment than Kate, because she is focused on so many at one time. Um, but those pop-ups are an excellent solution if you have a very um, immediate question. And like Liz, I love Watson. So mm -hmm. please come share your hopes and dreams. I promise I'm not going to laugh. I've had some wild and outrageous notions of my own. <laughs> Fellowships and scholarships have made some of them possible. Yeah. Um, I hope that will be true for you and look forward very much to talking to you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Thank you. All right. Best of luck.